Good morning, everybody. How are you this morning? Great. Um, welcome. If you're new visiting us, it rises your able. We're going to start our song service today with Today is the Day. In my cares aside, I'm leaving my past behind. I'm setting my heart and mind on you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hands to yours, believing there's so much more, knowing that all you have in store for me, it's good. It's good. Today is the day. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I won't worry about tomorrow. Trusting in what you say. Today is the day. Today is the day. I'm putting my fears aside. I'm leaving my doubts behind. Giving my hopes and dreams to you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hands to yours, believing there's so much more. Knowing that all you have in store for me, it's good. Oh, it's good. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day. Rejoice and be glad in it, and I won't worry about tomorrow. Trusting in what you say, today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in. in what you say today is the day today is the day today is the Fear not, for I am with you, fear not. 
please be seated and join with me in prayer. Loving God, your people have gathered here again on this Sunday morning to worship and praise your holy name, to experience your spirit moving among us and through us, and to be in community with each other. Bless each person here today, O oh God, and may we put aside any challenges or distractions that we've carried into this place, and just for the next hour, just be fully attentive to the movement of your spirit that surrounds us. We thank you, God, for each and every person, and we say this in Jesus the Christ, amen and amen and amen. Good morning. What a joy it is to welcome everybody to Metropolitan Community Church of Albuquerque on this glorious last Sunday in August, and September is right around the corner, and that's always a great time. I think we've got the state fair and other things going on, so, and the yard sale is this weekend. Andy, you want to say anything? Or? We can do that. Okay, if you're watching us remotely, we want to do a shout out to you and say welcome to our worship service today. And we hope that one day if you're in town, you'll be able to stop in and see us. Um, we're going to get, in just a second, we're going to see a introduction to the new series, which begins September 8th. And uh, it really speaks to the division that's in our country right now. And about how it's not about getting people to come to our side or the other side but about learning to walk in love with each other. So I'm going to watch the trailer, and then Paul's going to come up and do the threshold one. Kindness, respect, compassion, love. How do you want to be treated? There's a phrase often referred to as the golden rule that simply states, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's a call to treat others with the same kindness we would want to receive in return. Yet, during election season, it seems division and polarization are common headlines. In a time filled with negativity, we have a choice to make. Choosing kindness isn't about avoiding our differences, but navigating them with respect and compassion. Kindness has the power to influence even more than an election. It strengthens relationships, neighborhoods, and communities. It helps us find common ground instead of taking sides. It allows us to disagree and remain friends. It builds bridges instead of walls. Let's vote for kindness, one small act at a time. That looks good. This is our threshold moment as we make a transition from getting here to being here. The Apostle Paul was one of the most prolific writers of the Christian scriptures and his letters were intercepted and have become the bedrock of Christian tradition. Today we're going to hear a passage where he encourages us to put on the full armor of God. But just what does that mean? He says that we're in a state of spiritual warfare against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And as a result, I think we have developed a deep-seated spiritual paranoia. We look for that so-called devil lurking behind every corner. And we fear that evil is always on the ready to pounce out from the shadows and be our undoing. But maybe there's a different way of looking at it. Maybe we're called to simply be ourselves, to speak truth, to seek out the right path, to speak words of peace rather than words of war, to choose our beliefs and to live as if they are true, but most of all, to know that Jesus came to save us from the most fearsome enemy of all, ourselves. We now have a reading from Ephesians. Good morning. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. 
Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, which, with, which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known <clears throat> with boldness my, the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. This is the time when we come together as a community of faith and just share our prayers and our concerns, our praises. Loving God, we thank you for being a God of love and compassion. And you teach us to walk with kindness. Strengthen us as church members, God, and help this faith community continue to do what you have called us to do. We lift up those in our congregation who are sick today and just ask that you be with them, those who are lonely or hurting. And we pray for our upcoming series that perhaps we can be bridge builders and not creator of walls and divisions. We thank you for this time and this space. And we thank you for each person that's here today, and we say all this in your many names. Amen.
soar with you. Your spirit leads me on by the power of your love. Hold me close, let your love surround me. Bring me near and draw me to your side. By the power of your love, and I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on. By the power of your love. Amen. Well, um, Leave it to a gay man to read, put on the full armor of God, and translate that into my sermon title, Getting Dressed for the Ball. Now, it was really hard to find any jokes about that. I did find one. I'll save it for last. So here are a couple uh, good ones that are totally unrelated. Jim was leaving church after Christmas services when the pastor greeted him and said, Jim, it's time you joined the army of the Lord. We need you here every Sunday. Jim says, I'm already in the army of the Lord, Pastor. Then why do we only see you on Christmas and Easter? Jim looks left and right, and he leans in to whisper, I'm in the secret service. <laughs> so there was a circuit-riding preacher who trained his horse to go when he said, Praise the Lord, and to stop when he said, Amen. The preacher gets on his horse, and he says, Praise the Lord, and off he rides into the nearby mountains. When he wanted to stop for lunch by a mountain stream, he says, amen, the horse stops. He gets, finishes his lunch and gets off again saying, praise the Lord. And the horse starts heading towards the edge of a cliff. And he gets confused and excited and he says, whoa. And then he remembered, amen. And then he looks up to heaven and says, praise the Lord. You guys are slow. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, this is the last one. The wife caught me cross-dressing, so I packed her things and left. Okay, I promise, I'll stop. Pastor Judy and I have been preaching from the lectionary the last uh, couple of uh, weeks. I got a little tired of John's Gospel, and so today I chose a reading from the book of Ephesians. And it's always important to put passages of scripture into context. And so I want to give a little background on the author and the audience of the book. This epistle was intended for the growing number of followers of the way who lived in and around the ancient city of Ephesus, which is located in modern day Turkey near the western coast of the country on the sea, on the Aegean Sea. And like most cities in that region, control over the city had gone back and forth and back and forth over the centuries. But by the time Paul was around, it was, had been firmly under Roman control, and it was a bustling metropolis, and it was at the end of a major trade route from Asia. And because of its long history and because of its location, it was filled with people and customs from literally all over. And consequently, it was very diverse religiously and culturally. It became an important Christian center, and Paul started many of his missions from there. So he knew the people, and he knew the city that they lived in. It's traditionally been attributed to, to Paul, but today many scholars uh, have, are divided into two schools of thought. Some say that it was written by a follower of Paul, someone who knew him very well, and as the letter circulated, it just became attributed to him. And others say it was written by Paul, and if so, most likely at the end of his life when he was imprisoned in Rome. But the main reason for this difference of opinion is because it just doesn't sound like him. 
When we compare Ephesians to some of the letters that we do know that he wrote, there are many differences in both theology and writing style. The book divides neatly into two sections. Chapters one through three are about the unity of the church and our connection to Jesus Christ. And the last three chapters are encouragement to live by new ethical standards that come from being a follower of Jesus. Now, I'm going to date myself here. I remember being taught this passage way back in the days of the flannel board. And if you don't know what that is, just think of it as an ancient way of bringing cave drawings to life. And you can ask one of these guys in the old folks row uh, what a flannel board is, and they can tell you. I also remember a really cool year of vacation Bible school when this was the theme. And we actually had a belt of truth and a breastplate of righteousness and a shield of faith and a sword of the spirit. And each day, one lucky kid would get to wear that item for the day, and the best one was that sword of the spirit. And this passage is a central part of the idea of spiritual warfare. And some, that's something I really don't put a lot of stock into. Paul puts into our minds the idea of cosmic powers that are battling evil lurking around in heavenly places. And certainly the idea of good versus evil is a very common, common theme. But the image of an evil force that can influence us into doing evil things can let us get off the hook by simply saying, the devil made me do it. It wasn't my fault. There was something outside of me that caused me to do that. I don't believe evil is outside of us. And I don't believe that goodness is outside of us. They are both inside, as, uh, inside of us, and we are capable of both good and evil. So this cosmic battleground, I don't envision somewhere out there in the heavenly places. I envision it going on right in here, in our hearts and in our minds and in our bodies and in our souls. We have to decide, as the, the trailer said, we have to make a choice to be kind. We have to decide every moment of every day how we're going to act and what we're going to say and how we're going to be. And that's where good and evil come out. So in my thinking today, my takeaway from this passage are the things and the characteristics that Paul names. Instead of being fearful of, attack, of an attack from Lucifer Morningstar, which is a fancy name for the devil, we need to focus on who we are on the inside and how we interact with the world around us. So first, the first thing he names is truth. We need to speak our truth. We need to speak truth to power, and we need to confront injustice with truth whenever and wherever we see it. I was so thrilled and excited to see this done over and over again this past week during the Democratic Convention. It was inspiring to see and to hear and uplifting, to know that there is a wellspring of change coming, to know that there are people that want to make a difference the next thing Paul mentions is righteousness. It's a fancy word. It means rightness. We need to do the right thing, to do the God thing, to do the thing that God would have us do as has been shown to us in the way of Jesus. The 23rd Psalm has the line, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. What does that mean? It means that God leads us in the right path, in the right way, because that's what God does. God does not mislead us. God does not lead us on a path to destruction, but one that leads back to the source of all, the source of love and life and hope. And we need to walk that right path. Next, we need to be ready to proclaim peace not human peace, a peace that is forced at the end of a weapon, but God's peace, a peace that says we are not fighting each other, we're not fighting ourselves, we're not fighting with God, but we have rest. We can be at peace in the arms of God. We can have that shalom of God, which is the promise of rest. 
And Paul encourages us to live out our faith. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again and again until I get it, because I'm preaching to the choir when I say it. Faith is choosing to believe something and living as if it's true. I choose to believe in our inherent goodness. I choose to believe that people really want to be kind and compassion, compassionate and caring and generous, merciful and fair-minded, that people want to live out that golden rule. I don't want to look for the bad in other people, but I want to look for the good. And I want to strive to live this way every day of my life. I want to live as if these beliefs are true. And some days are better than others. There's a prayer that goes, God, so far it's been a good day. I haven't lied to anyone. I haven't been, been mean or nasty. I haven't cheated or been unkind. But God, in a minute, I'm going to get out of this bed, and after that, I'm really going to need your help. We're to bring salvation into the world. But what is that? Is it being saved by grace through faith in Jesus? Is it accepting Jesus as our personal savior? Is it being born again? Yeah, it's those things. But so much more. When you save someone or something, you bring it back. You rescue it. You bring it out of a place of harm or danger and you bring it into a place of safety and recovery. And our world needs salvation more than ever before. We need to be liberated from the powers of oppression. We need to be brought out of our destructive ways that are destroying our planet as we watch. We need to be brought out of harm's way and into home's way, into that place where we find love and safety and belonging and hope. And finally, we have the sword of the Spirit. You see, we can't do any of this on our own. That's how we got into this mess in the first place, by trying. By trying to live without God and live our own way. We did not choose God's way, and by we, I mean all of humanity throughout all of history. We chose our own, and we suffer the consequences in countless ways. And we need God's help. We need God's spirit to guide us, to animate us, to admonish and uplift us to live out that better way. And Paul ends with the most powerful tool of all, and that's prayer. We need to pray for each other, for our world, for our leaders. We need to ask for God's help in all of these things. Now, as we prepare ourselves for everyday life, the ball, whatever you want to call it. We need to get ready. We need to put on things that are different from what the world tells us to put on. We need to be ourselves, but we need these things that Paul gives to us and shows us. We need truth and peace and salvation and, and faith and spirit and trust. And so it's my prayer for you, and I hope your prayer for me and for Pastor Judy that not only we as individuals, but we as a church will stand firm and proclaim our truth and proclaim our peace to a world that needs it. Would you pray with me? Holy and loving God, we thank you. We thank you that you equip us to be your presence in the world. And we pray that you would grant us the things that we need, that we might be strong, that we might be effective in in delivering your message of hope and peace and love, unconditional love to our world. Give us this day our daily bread, and we pray these things in your holy name. Amen. Where there's doubt.
Thank you all for being here today. This is the time when we take up our offerings that we give back to God. And uh, you can do it by through PayPal if you want, or we also have Zelle. You can go to our website and do an automatic bank, dra bank draft. Or bring us gold bars or silver bars or something. Whatever. God always blesses us. Um, so thank you all for your generosity. And PJ is going to talk. We've got the yard sale this weekend. Please come. Okay, we've got a lot of junk to get rid of. So, and PJ is going to talk about Las Vegas Pride. Morning. So, is everyone ready to go to Las Vegas? Las Vegas, New Mexico. <laughs> Tony and I are working uh, with the city of Las Vegas, and I'm a uh, professor at New Mexico Highlands University. They're also putting on. Las Vegas Pride, which is scheduled for September 28th. So mark your calendars. There'll be more information that's coming out. We're doing a flag raising ceremony, a, a pride flag that's gonna be at Heritage Park in the middle of Highlands University. Uh, drag shows on a Friday night, Pride in the Plaza on Saturday. So just make a note of it and I'll be giving some more information. So see you in Las Vegas.
I'm a lamb that was slain, and my love washes you clean. I'm the pure. I'd like to emphasize what Reverend Paul had mentioned in his sermon, the gift and the amount of power that prayer has in our life and in our world. These next 10 weeks are going to be a very critical time for all of us. And yet if we believe in a God who can create such beautiful things as these flowers, each petal representing perhaps each one of us, if we believe in a God who can create the flowers, can we not believe in a God who's going to see us through every day, every week, every month, every year of our lives? And we believe in that God because Jesus, who was one with us, who walked this earth, who was a human being just like you and I, he gave us this gift. He was with his friends on the night before he 
When he took the simple element of bread, he blessed it, he broke it, then he gave it to his friends as is given to each of us today. And Jesus said, take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my life. This is who I am. And I'm giving you this gift for your journey here on earth. And when the meal was ended again, he gave you thanks and praise. And then he gave the cup to his friends, as is given to each of us today. And he said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is my life, which is being poured out, which is given up for each and every one of you. And all I ask of you is to remember me. Will you join me in prayer? Most gracious and loving God, we pray that you will send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that you will consecrate them, and thereby consecrating us to do your work here on this earth. Be with us, Lord. Give us patience. Give us care. Give us a loving heart to spread that love that you have given us to others. Bless us, Lord. Make us your soldiers. Make us your hands, feet, and mouths to make a better world for all of us to live in. And we make this through the power and through the support of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Here at MCC and all MCC altars, we have an open communion. The table is set. Come and be nourished. The holders and servers, please come forward.
most gracious and loving God, we truly thank you for the time that we have spent here with you today. We pray that our voices as they were raised in song and our voices as we prayed quietly are heard by you, God, to be with us, to direct us, to guide us, and to nourish us. Bless us to your service, and in Jesus' name I pray, amen. <clears throat> well, thank you for being with us. It's so good to see all your faces. Um, rise as you're able for our final song, You Never Let Go. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of Perfect love is casting out fear And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life Won't turn back, I know you are near I will fear no evil For my God is with Shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh, no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh, no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh, no, you never let go. Lord, you never let go. Never. 
birthday, so we have a birthday cake in the back for him. This weekend at the yard sale, okay? So we'll be here, and we'll, we have pizza used to eat and stuff. It'll be fun. God bless. Go in peace.